Hey everyone, welcome back to a special edition of Prime News. Uh, we have Nintendo's financial report in, and that's literally all this episode's about. We're not talking about any other gaming news today because this is the story of the day, of the evening, of the yesterday, of the in the middle of the night, Nintendo does their thing because they are in Japan. And I've got all these notes. So we're going to break this down into three stories. The first one being Nintendo Switch sales, the actual system itself. So, the Nintendo Switch has sold 79, let me see here, 79.89 <coughs> million units. Also, in addition to that, uh, they sold 11.57 million units last quarter. Now, last quarter encompasses essentially the entire holiday season. It's October, November, and December. Now, this is the highest sales quarter in Switch history, but it's also higher than the Nintendo Wii. That's right. It has outsold any quarter the Nintendo Wii has ever done. In fact, if this was a Nintendo DS, this would be the third best selling quarter in Nintendo DS history. Pretty interesting there, right? Now, here's another fun fact. As of the end of last quarter, December 31st, 2020, the Switch launch aligned, which means running in the exact same path as the Wii from when it launched to a very similar date. The Switch is officially ahead of the Nintendo Wii. That's right. It is on pace to outsell what the Wii sold in the same time frame. In fact, it's actually likely going to outsell the Game Boy, which sold 118 million units. That is a lot of Nintendo Switches out there. Whether it's Switch Lite, whether it's OG Switch, you know what the deal is there. Now, we have the next story, which is a whole bunch of million seller updates with Nintendo Switch software and some initial thoughts on that. But before I get into that, hey, look, I know, right, at the time of making this video, we have not announced the winner of the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, or Nintendo Switch giveaway. That will be coming later today in a live stream happening at noon CST. If you're watching this after the fact, then the winner's already been announced. And if you're curious, go back and look at that. However, I do want to announce we have our new giveaway for the month of February starting because it is the first. It is the month of love around here. And to show you guys some additional love, I'm going to be giving away two copies of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. However, this time around, I'm not going to wait till the end of the month to do it. We are going to give the giveaway now, and we're going to end it on the 11th and announce the winner. Oh, really end it on the 10th and announce the winners on the 11th so they can actually get the game before launch. What does that mean we're going to do for the rest of the month? Well, stay tuned because obviously we will launch a second giveaway uh, after we finish that one to end out February as we get into Valentine's Day. Hence the, the red shirt around here. All right. Let me get back into some love mode here because <clears throat> I'm going to look at this paper for this because we have a lot of software sales to talk about here. So, first up, the best-selling game on Switch to date is still Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It sold, well, its cumulative sales, I guess, are at 33.41 million, but it is not the only 30 million seller. Oh, you know what game we're talking about, right? We're talking about Animal Crossing New Horizons. It is now at <clears throat> 31.18 million. Uh, it actually outsold it about two and a half times, uh, you know, the sales of Mario Kart 8 uh, Deluxe during that same period. So it's highly likely by the end of this fiscal year, if not the first quarter of next fiscal year, that Animal Crossing New Horizons will probably be the best-selling Switch game to date. Now, what's interesting here is if you combine sales of the Wii U original release of Mario Kart 8 and sales of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, technically, Mario Kart 8 on the whole is the best-selling Mario Kart game of all time. Think about that for a moment. Wow. Remember, we're talking Mario Kart Wii, we have the Mario Kart DS, outsold all of that. Wow, I, I just, 
Mario Kart 9 needs to get here, man. I, I don't even know where, where do the sales stop for that one. All right. Next up, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at the third spot, selling $22.85 million. Uh, we have Breath of the Wild has officially joined the $20 million seller list uh, at $21.45 million. Essentially sold a million and a half last quarter. Pokemon Sword and Shield has also joined the $20 million seller list. Uh, that is at the number four spot. Wait, five spot. Sorry, at $20.35 million. Super Mario Odyssey is at the number six spot with $20.23 million, also joining that $20 million sellers list. Super Mario Party is at uh, number seven there with $13.82 million. At number eight, we have Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee at $13 million on the dot. At number nine, we have Splatoon 2 at $11.9 million. Uh, at number 10, and this rounds out the top 10, but we got more beyond that, we have New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe at $9.82 million. So that's likely going to cross $10 million here uh, if it hasn't already. Luigi's Mansion 3 is at $9.13 million, And again, it's highly likely to become another $10 million seller here in the next few months. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have Ring Fit Adventure. Yes, Ring Fit Adventure that I just started playing, baby. Let me tell you, it's a real workout. My arms are sore as heck. This, that, that, when you take that ring con and you're pushing it over your head like this to beat the boss and then you're like you're you know uh, doing the ab guard thing and then you're sitting here and you're pulling oh my, let me tell you works out the arms works out the abs the glutes everything is uh feeling whew, hot fire it's a real thing man it might it might be better than we fit ever was in my opinion ring fit adventure sold 8.68 million cumulative sales Holy crap, Ring Fit's going to be a 10 million plus seller? Oh, here we go. Uh, next up is Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Sold 8.32 million. It sold an additional 3 million. Yeah, it's probably hitting over 10 by the end of March. Um, so temporary release, but over 10 million? Maybe Nintendo's on to something. I don't know. Uh, next up, we have Super Mario Maker 2 at 6.91 million. Uh, we have Paper Mario the Origami King at 3.05 million. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity at 2.84 million. Now, we actually know the sales are at 3.5 million, but it is published by Koei Tecmo in, uh, in Japan. It's published by Nintendo everywhere else. So this is just Nintendo's side of the publishing sales because these are just Nintendo sales. So we know it's at 3.5 million. So we know it's actually ahead of Paper Mario the Origami King. But that's just the overseas sales. Uh, next up is Clubhouse Games 55 World Worldwide Classics that released last year. 2.62 million. Pikmin 3 Deluxe at 1.94 million. Uh, interesting because I've seen stories that Pikmin 3 Deluxe is now like the best selling Pikmin game of all time. So take that for what you will. Uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe is peak Pikmin popularity. Pretty cool. Pikmin 4, Miyamoto. Pikmin 4. No. All right. Uh, moving on, we have Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition at $1.48 million. A re-release outselling the original release. Yes. Um, and then we have Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is officially a million seller, and it is a lot of fun. We did a video on that. It was great. Um, now, this is when we get into... The juicy part. See, the sales figures are all great. Nintendo record profit levels over five billion in profits. Like Nintendo just killing it last quarter. But the, you see, there's more here. There's more because we have the Switch Pro to talk about. Now, Nintendo was asked in the Q and A session after the meeting directly, "Hey, what's up with the new model of Switch?" In fact, the exact question was. This is according to Takahashi Machizuki, who was present at the meeting. New model this year. Nintendo responded, not planning to make an announcement anytime soon, as we have Mario version in February and the Monster Hunter version in March. So, hey, we have these two other Switches coming. We have nothing to announce. Nothing anytime soon. Notably, when Nintendo's chief was asked this same question at the last fiscal meeting, here's what he said. We have, we are not planning to release a new model in 2020. But today, it was just not anytime soon. He didn't say not in 2021, not anytime soon. Take that for what you will. What does soon mean? I don't know. What's also interesting is this graph. Yeah, uh, David Gibson put this up. He is an analyst. He put this up uh, on Twitter. And 
What's interesting about this is this is Nintendo's de-stocking list. So it's a little bit difficult to understand, but essentially you see how the bars are really, really low towards the right, which include like the last five quarters of Nintendo production. So I have some notes on this after getting uh, some advice from other people who understand the de-stocking of this uh, inventory more involved in manufacturing. Uh, what this means is that uh, Nintendo is destocking inventory switch to record low levels. Uh, Nintendo is purposely reducing inventory levels of switch, aka they're just making less switches right now today than at any point in Switch's life when demand is supposedly at its highest. While COVID can be stated to play a role, it has naturally. Uh, this actually started happening in late 2019 and even after Nintendo built a new factory outside Japan. It never really bounced back. Nintendo is technically, because you can go online easily and go into some stores and pick up a Switch here and there, uh, they're actually successfully fulfilling demand at the moment, uh, but they're purposely only releasing enough Switches for that demand. They're not overstocking um, and exceeding it like they have done since three months after release. So normally they exceed the stock and keep switches on store shelves. They're not doing that. They're, they're not doing it on purpose. So in other words, Nintendo is choosing to not keep inventory levels higher despite having presently the production capability at this exact moment to do so. Why? This happens notably every single time a new product is getting ready to launch and the public just doesn't pay attention to it because manufacturing lines are being split between the current switches and the future product. In other words, Nintendo's just doing what Nintendo does, baby. Deny, deny, deny until they announce. So Switch Pro 2021, I'm just saying, the rumors have been percolating. Nintendo's destocking switches on purpose to keep inventory levels super low, which is typically done when the manufacturing lines are split because they're making a new product. I'm just, just saying it's all lining up. We know Nintendo actually has publicly known contracts with uh, new display uh, partners. Uh, we know they built a new factory you know it is an actual factory but they built it in a samsung facility i'm just saying there's some stuff going on here that's adding up that has nothing to do with rumor monger so here we go baby 2021 is shaping up to be quite the year obviously we know we got super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury later this month pretty hyped that bowser's fury mode looks legit as hell if you ask me and then you know there's a little thing called Monster Hunter Rise arriving. Oh, what about that new Pokemon Snap? And this is just the games we know are coming this year. There's going to be many, many more. All right, folks. I am Nathaniel RoboJance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you guys for tuning into this, oh, this little special episode of Prime News. And don't worry, I didn't forget how we end. Oh, what's the tradition? Oh, right. <laughs>